All right, so thank you everybody for watching. Uh, today I have Mimi, she's uh, gonna talk to us, share her story, but before we get started, I'd like to thank you for watching and remind you that um, if you'd like to create awareness and help us uh, with our cause uh, by creating awareness for what's going on going on out there in the, in the streets as far as uh, young folks using drugs and you'd like to help the good uh, best way to help is subscribe like and share with your friends family to create it create that awareness and help us out okay so uh, Mimi you reached out to me why did you reach out to me well, first of all, sir, I would like to commend you uh, on your uh, channel so much. I love watching your channel. Um, it opens my eyes to, first of all, it, it makes me appreciate where I am right now in my recovery because I am two months and uh, uh, two years, I'm sorry, in recovery. And I love watching your show because it shows the realness and the raw activity that goes on out here in today's uh, day and age uh, with these kids, even uh, the youngest of kids, um, what they're exposed to on the streets and how dangerous it could be. Um, I love watching your channel so much. And I just wanted to say, I love what you do. Keep up the good work. I reached out to you as soon as I saw like, to be honest, a lot of these girls remind me of myself when I was using. That's why I reached out to you. I was watching, like, you know, I started binge watching kind of your channel and I saw a lot of the females and I'm like, they're very young. They're very young, beautiful women that uh, have a whole life ahead of them. So I reached out to, to kind of see if I can help anybody out there to say that I was heavily in addiction and I am two years clean almost and I'm very proud of myself. And if I can do it, I'm sure that uh, anybody can do it. They just have to put in the time and the effort. And so uh, thank you for reaching out and thank you for wanting to create awareness. So what drugs were you using? I was using uh, heroin. Uh, in the beginning, it was heroin. It then turned into the uh, drug, which we know as fentanyl. Um, so I was doing fentanyl and I was doing crack cocaine. How old were you when you started? I started at 17 years old. I was still in high school. And uh, how were you introduced to that? Was it friends, family, school? It was absolutely friends. Friends, people who I thought were my friends. And th they were my friends. Um, they were actually in the same boat as I was in. We were girls, we were young, we were in high school. We were hanging out with people much older than us and being introduced to things that we had no idea what they were, drugs. And we started with drinking alcohol and smoking weed. And they say weed is the gateway drug. And for me, it definitely was. And from there, it just escalated. It went from, you know, the heroin to the smoking crack to try, I tried ecstasy. I tried, you know, a whole bunch of um, other uh, drugs too, but my main drug of choice, as they say, was the fentanyl. So we're doing Zoom today because you're in a different state. I'm in Arizona and you're in New Jersey. So is there a big growing problem uh, locally in your community? Uh, and again, that's why I reached out to you too, sir, because let me tell you, I mean, I, I've never been to Arizona. Um, I, I always wanted to go there. It just seems so beautiful, uh, regardless of what goes on, because that goes on everywhere, even in New Jersey. The fentanyl epidemic is, um, it's growing. It's getting worse. The numbers are getting higher of deaths each year. Um, it, it's getting bad. It's getting really, really bad. And I just hope that, I wish that there was some something like this for me when I was using, you know, I wish there was a program or a show or a channel. I could go to YouTube and see, oh, oh wow, this girl, she's so beautiful. She's my age. She's young. She's smart. And she she stopped using like where she was using and she stopped using like or maybe I don't have to use at all if I hear from her, you know, life story. You know what I mean? I wish I can help anybody. I, I really do. It's it's. It's a dangerous place. And you said you started when you were about 17 and you've been two years clean now. So that's, that's how I'm, 20, I'm 28 years old. So that's 
when I was 26, from That's eight, to, from 17, 18 to 26 years old, I was uh, almost a whole decade. I was, um, I was putting poison into my body. And did you experience any violence, anything, uh, any overdoses, anything crazy out there? And you during your, your nearly 10 years of drug use? Yes, I have. I've experienced, thank God I've never OD'd. Um, I never really lived on the street unless I chose to, uh, meaning uh, there were nights where I was ashamed to go back home to my mother and father of our uh, culture and religion. I was so ashamed that I would sleep outside. I would um, stay out in the streets because I was afraid to deal with my dad and how he would look at his daughter. You know what I mean? There was a lot of guilt, a lot of shame, a lot of just negativity with that comes with it. So um, I experienced being, uh, you know, hit by uh, males, other men who, you know, you, you know, when you when you're trying to go out there and uh, fend for yourself or uh, find money to buy your drugs, you you end up getting um, into cars with people who you don't know, strangers, and anything can happen. So I definitely did experience a lot of mishaps, and I'm so glad that I'm still alive today. And how did you stop? So I told you I, I am a mother of one. Um, I got pregnant um, and I was still using heavily. After I knew I was pregnant, unfortunately, I'm saying this with a very heavy heart, I was still using because I was, I was so scared to be as sick as I was and I didn't want to be sick or I didn't want to, oh, 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 I almost didn't want to, um, I didn't want, I didn't know what was gonna happen. Like I was a decade of using and it was like really hard for me to let this go. This was my, this was my drug, my medicine, my thing that I went to when I was sad. It, it basically, I'm not, I'm not um, making it seem like a, a, as a good thing but it, it was like, it took my life over. I was isolating myself and it was basically me and the drug for 10 years. So um, letting it go was very hard, but it was doable. I got, I um, went to the doctor. I explained that I did want to be a mother to my child. Uh, how can I save my child? Although I was already deep into my pregnancy. I had like a couple months left. Um, I was still able to save my child. He came out beautiful. And, um, you know, after he was born, um, I was when I really uh, stopped for good. Um, he came out, I, I was I was afraid that I would see a charred baby or a, a baby with missing toes or like people were kept scaring me saying things like your baby's not going to be okay. Y you're killing your baby. Your baby's going to be like this. And I just put all my faith in God. And I said, please protect this baby. And I want to have this baby no matter what. And he came out like an angel, so beautiful and just like a blessing in disguise after he was born, it was just like a sign to me that this, you know, if nothing happened to the baby after everything that you've been doing, you know, it's like, you better thank God. You know what I mean? And just, um, I took that as a, I took that as my, um, my getaway card. I was like, this is it. This is my, my, um, my ticket out of this. Like my son is my new addiction. He's my new focus. He's my new, um, you know, high. So, I replaced the drug with my son, as cliche as that sounds. And now I've been uh, taking care of my son ever since he was born. I haven't been using or abusing drugs. Um, I put on my weight back. I, I got my family's trust back. I, you know, my friends that I've lost, my relationships that I, you know, bridges that I've burnt, everything is slowly but surely going back to how it used to be, all because I got myself back who I used to be you know? So, uh, yeah, congratulations on doing that, choosing your child over, you know, something that was with you for 10 years almost, right? So that's, 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 that takes a lot of courage, dedication, and a complete focus from, you know, something that was basically your everything to your child, which is, which needs you, right? Your, your, your yeah, child's depending on you. My everything. Yep. Yep. So, so, uh, so, so that takes a lot of courage. So uh, uh, I commend you. I applaud you. And the people that are going to watch this are going to 
hopefully draw inspiration from your story okay so thank you so much for that i really do hope that anyone who watches this who has a loved one who has a daughter a niece a sister um anybody in their family who's going through it i guess my advice would just be to approach them in a way that's not just so like how would i say this don't be mean about it. Don't be like um, pushy about it because either way, they're gonna choose the way of the drug and the drug is always in their head, like telling them like, you know, you need the drugs, you need the drugs, you need the drugs. Just try to approach it in a more easier way. Um, be easy going with them, talk to them, be calm, you know, approach the situation calmly so that, cause I remember when my mom used to come up to me and be like, you know, you know, she would, she would want to help me, but it would go south because of the way she approached me because I'm already an addict and I'm, I'm already thinking about the drugs. So if she came at me like, oh, drugs, this and drugs that, well, that would be a negative way to come up to me because I'm already constantly thinking about the drugs. But when she approached me saying, you know, like, I want my daughter back. Like I miss my daughter. Like I miss who you used to be like your son needs you your family needs you your family misses you like you know you change you know approach them like that try to let them know that this thing this substance is taking them away from you slowly instead of kind of like being like you know you're doing this to yourself and you're doing that to yourself kind of just be like do you want this to be you or do you want to you know chase your dreams and chase your aspirations and be the person who you always wanted to be like you know I didn't always want to be a mom but now I'm a mom and I'm really happy I'm a stay-at-home mom I you know I work when I can from home with the whole epidemic and everything and life is good you life is what you make it right definitely yeah that's a that's great uh, advice that you're giving parents on how to help and give support to their child that's out on the streets right how they can best approach them, talk to them and give them that, 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 that backing. Right. So thank you for that. So any last advice that you would give to any young folks out there uh, in school, they're at 14, 15 and they're being influenced. What would you, what advice would you give them? Don't try it. Don't do it. Just don't even do it. That's the advice I would give. You know, um, we grew up uh, learning about like say no to drugs, this and that, but, um, we never had, we, we didn't have this. We didn't have, um, like I said, thank you so much for your channel, uh, a few other channels, a few other, you know, now actually a lot of people uh, in within their families are dealing with addiction more so than it before. So a lot, of, a lot more people are like, um, they're open to it, but they're still ignorant to it. They don't understand it. So the advice I would give is just, look at me, look at the people who have experienced uh, drug uh, abuse and, and just decide, honey, like, do you want it to be you or not? Because if you try it, this, this um, life, this struggle, this, you know, uh, all the negativity will catch up to you. It will. If you try this drug, you will suffer. You will go through pain. You will go through loneliness. You will experience depression, anxiety, even after you get clean, it's, it's, it's really, you know, the choice is yours, but make the choice that's best for you and your health and your family and your loved ones. Don't use it. Just don't try your best not to get educated on it and do not, do not even try this drug. It is not something to try. It's not candy. It's a dangerous, dangerous substance. So with you being clean now, would you say there's any struggles in your life because of the drug, like mentally, emotionally, like you have to battle, like temptation, going back, any, any type of battles like that? You know, uh, when, you're in the, when you're on this journey and you go through so many rehabs and so many programs, they teach you, like they instill in you um, that once an addict, once you're an addict, you're always going to be an addict. I refuse to let that be my, my, my mentality. I refuse to let myself think that I'm always going to be an addict. And so I fight that. I fight that with every little piece of me and tell myself that 
it is a struggle every day to fight that, but it's better than believing that I'm going to always be an addict because if I keep telling myself once an addict, always an addict, one day, believe me, I will justify using again. And I do not want that. Yeah, that's uh, that's powerful. And that's a really good mindset to have, right? Be positive. You. Uh, you, you're, you're living a whole new life. And, uh, and it's because you chose you chose that, right? You yeah. you put you put a lot of work into getting clean. I'm sure it wasn't easy. If it was easy, you would have got clean long time ago, right? Right. So, uh, but you had a motivation. You had something that pushed you, and uh, you wanted to share your story. So, any other last words that you'd like to share with us before we conclude? Just thank you so so much for giving me this opportunity, and I hope. I really, really do hope that it helps somebody, anybody. Thank you so much yeah, for the work that you do. Yeah, th thank you very much for your support and for the folks out there watching their support. Uh, so uh, it's important for us to get the word out, to hear your story, you know, that it's not just here in Arizona, it's in New Jersey, it's in other countries, everywhere. everywhere. And you know what? I think it's growing, it's gonna get worse, but we yeah. can do something about it. You share your story, somebody's impacted, and then they'll they'll spread that story and you know stay away from that. And uh, I think I really make a difference. Hope so. I really, really, that's my dream. I'm um it's like ever since I stopped using, I became like an advocate for others, you know. I really want to help. Good. Well, you know what? Thousands and thousands of people are gonna watch this, and I think you all are gonna help somebody. Okay, so thank you very much, Mimi. I appreciate you, you so reaching much. out. Yep, and we'll talk soon. Stay updated, okay? Absolutely. If you want, if anybody wants to reach me or ask me anything, anything, like I'm, a, I'm an open book, they can follow my channel too or ask me on my channel. It's Umayma Uncensored and ask me anything. I will, I'm willing to help anybody with any questions that they have. I don't mind. I'll put your contact info, what you want to share in the comments in the description, okay? So they can reach out to you for advice, for Anything. mentorship, counseling, just uh, some yeah. words that you can help them with, right? Okay, so, thank you so much. Thank you for your willingness to help people just like me. If we do it yes, together. That's why I love you so much. I love your channel so much. I, I, lo I look forward to uh, your episode every day. <laughs> Awesome. Well, you know what? I'm going on vacation tonight, so you guys won't see me for a week, but uh, thank you very much, and we'll talk soon, okay? All right. You deserve Thanks, it. Stay safe. Bye. Bye.